world of design engineering, the realm of computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, product data management, and product lifestyle management is constantly evolving. These technologies form the backbone of modern design processes, enabling engineers to innovate, collaborate, and bring products to market with efficiency and precision. As design engineers navigate this landscape of advancements and challenges, understanding the intricacies of the CAD, CAM, PDM, PLM business is paramount. From market trends to technological shifts and from cloud native solutions to the future of design processes, there are many avenues to explore and insights to glean. Joining us today is Dave Katzman, head of PTC's Velocity Group to help shed some light on the subject. So thank you for being here with us today, Dave. Thank you for having me, Sharon. Uh, so why don't you tell me a little bit about PTC's Velocity Group first before we delve into the questions? Sure, happy to. And, you know, maybe it's best to start at a, at a high level, a little about what PTC is and what we do. And so when you think about PTC, uh, the easiest way to think about it is in the context of our customers. And, you know, our customers are those that build the products that the world relies on, everything from airplanes and cars to home appliances and medical devices and, and really everything in between. And so within that context, I lead what we call the Velocity Group here. And that's a combination really of three businesses. It's the uh, Arena PLM business, the Onshape CAD and PDM business, as well as the PTC Education Group. And that group is really, when I say PTC Education, I mean the group that takes our technologies out into the university and K through 12 space to really educate the next generation of the workforce. Very good. All right, so I'm just gonna dive right in then. So Please. what current trends are you seeing in the CAD, CAM, PDM, PLM market and how are they shaping the industry? Sure, so I mean, at, at a high level, uh, I'll start by saying it's really an exciting time for those of us that have been in and around this industry uh, for a while. And so, you know, what we're really seeing is this shift, this, this move to these cloud native and cloud-based technologies and with that really comes the fact that you can really unlock a lot of potential for future uh, collaboration within your organizations. And it's really, again, when it comes down to it, it's really this idea that these technologies have evolved so much, but our industry really hasn't taken advantage just yet. And that really goes the whole gambit from, you know, these large enterprises embracing new technologies and new ways of working all the way to the, the smallest companies embracing even systems like PLM, which used to be reserved for those very large organizations. Now we see even small med device companies that are trying to enable you know, global supply chains really embracing these new technologies. So why do you think that cloud native CAD and PDM is becoming increasingly popular and what benefits does it offer over traditional systems? Sure, so I mean, there's a, a multitude of benefits when you start talking about cloud native and technologies. You know, the, the biggest that typically sticks out to me is this concept of a, a single source of truth that's really only available when you have a, a cloud native SaaS based solution. And, you know, when you think about it, it really opens up this new way of working, right? What used to be, you, know, you can go all the way back decades to paper and pencil and the way engineers worked with, they'd be on their drawing board, they'd draw, they'd make a design, they'd walk it down the hall, they'd put it in a vault. Somebody else would come, take it out, go work on it. If you actually fast forward to today, a lot of products still get designed that way. It, it might be in 3D space and with digital files, but it's still the concept of an engineer working on a thing and locking it for themselves and for someone else to then work. With cloud native in this single source of truth and global deployments, you can actually enable collaboration in a whole new way of working where everybody can be working on the same design at the same time. And that's something that, you know, again, it goes back to that's the benefit that when you really look at it, this, this real cloud native strategy. Right. So in what ways are companies expected to incorporate um, sustainability and eco-friendly practices into their design processes in the future? Where do you see that going? Yeah, no, I think, um, you know, it's interesting when you talk about sustainability, it's been talked about for some time, but when you really take a step back, what we see now more and more is it's actually becoming more actionable. What used to be something that was really measured after design or after a product was built, how sustainable was it, is now really seeping back upstream into the, into the design process for engineers. So now engineers are thinking about how they design a product to be sustainable. How do they choose the right materials, the right structure, the right manufacturing process? 
And again, it's one of those things where it's been talked about for some time. And really recently, we've seen more and more of this energy go to actually building products that way. So we have to, of course, touch on the subject of uh, AI and machine learning. Um, so how do you see the role of AI and ML evolving um, in these solutions? And what impact will they have on the design process? Sure. So you're right. I mean, you really you can't go anywhere or watch anything or read anything these days without the concept of, of AI being front and center. And, you know, I think it's one of those things where we're really trying to focus on not on the buzzwords or the, the hype, but really where can we add value to our products and to the process so that our customers can design better products. So at the end of the day, that's, that's our mission. And so I think there's, there's a lot of ways when you break it down that we could see AI impacting the, the design and manufacturing process. Everything from, you know, co-pilot at the design side where maybe a designer is working and, and engineering and they're going through the process and they say, oh, you know, we think the next thing you would do is this based on X, Y, and Z. Or the other big extreme that we hear a lot about is generative design, where you can actually empower the computer, the, the algorithms to do some of the work for you. When, you know, we were just talking about sustainability. What a great application if you can get that right, where AI can add a lot of value. You're still going to have the engineer with design intent and all of that, but the AI can really add a layer of complexity that um, is something incredibly, incredibly exciting. And the truth is we actually are extremely excited here at PTC because with some of our cloud native architecture and our solutions, we actually have an enormous uh, set of data that's public data that designers have designed over the years that we can actually use to design and, and train these AI models. So, you know, we're still looking into what that will be, but, um, our commitment is that when we have an opportunity to add something with AI that's going to add value to our customers, we're going to do it. So what do you see as the challenges that companies are facing when they're transitioning to more collaborative and integrated design workflows? And then how can those be effectively addressed? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, when you talk about changing engineers' workflows, you're really talking about people change management more than you are anything about the tools. And the workforce um, these days, again, I mentioned earlier, they're really used to a, a way of working in the past, and that's no different than paper and pencil, really, right? They're still used to those design processes. And so bringing that, that workforce along as you think about embracing new ways of working and new technologies is really the hardest part. That said, once you see them embrace and unlock that value, they actually become the most excited because at, at the end of the day, engineers love to design innovative products. And so they're naturally innovative people. It's just our job to help them un empower themselves to do that. Right, that makes sense. Um, so what would you say are the key factors that companies should consider when they're selecting a CAD, CAM, PDM, PLM solution that aligns with their design and their collaboration needs? Uh, it, it, it's interesting. In, in your question, you're actually kind of implying something that I think is really important, which is that they're making a decision. And, you know, we always say the big, the worst decision is the accidental decision, where which is no decision. And so, you know, the first step is actually acknowledging that there's a decision to be made. And then I think, you know, when you really look at it, it comes down to one simple question. Do you want to improve your business, right? If, if you're comfortable with the way things have always been, then you're probably not going to do much. But if you want to change and improve, you have to take these big leaps and make these changes. And again, I go back to the process side of things. The only way you're going to really make a material change to the products you design or the speed you design them is by rethinking the tools you're using to do so. And that's really something, again, we're super excited to support and work with our customers on. Well, that's great. So let's talk a little bit about the data analytics. So how can companies leverage the data analytics and the insights from the systems to optimize the design processes and enhance the product quality, as well as improve the time to market? Sure. So, I mean, when you come, to, when you talk about analytics, um, you know, again, it goes back to some of the opportunities when you have a, a single source of truth, you have the opportunity for so many analytics that you never had before, because you know, everyone's working on the exact same data, you know, where they're working, when they're working. And so really, I like to break it down into two facets of where you go with this. One that you didn't mention, but I think is critically important is actually the security aspect of analytics, right? When you have all the data, you actually can tell who's working on it where. And again, it, you actually know that the data never leaves the system when you have the right analytics in place. And that's something that often gets overlooked with the traditional way of working where when people have files on their machines, it's gone at that point. You never know what really happens. Whereas when you have some of these cloud native systems with the analytics, 
you actually know exactly where the data is and isn't and who's accessing it. And so that's something that I think more and more is going to become prevalent as a reason for some of these new changes. And then on the other side, you know, you can actually see now real analytics about how long is the project taking, what projects are stalling, who's being stalled, how long are they being stalled. And this allows you to be proactive instead of reactive. What used to be a design review when you'd realize, oh my gosh, we're two, three, four weeks behind our timelines, let's do something about it. Now you can see up front early in the design process that this design seems way behind where it needs to be. These people are working way too many hours. Maybe we need to put people on it sooner rather than later to try and stay on our timelines. And so again, this is something where we're just seeing the, the beginning of this really being actioned because more and more organizations are embracing this concept of using data to help, not just report, right? The goal of good analytics is to help you make better decisions as you're going through the process, not just to report you know, what happened in the past. And so I think there's so much un- opportunity there to unlock value for the organizations. You know, and again, it's, it's something that it's, uh, there's a lot of work still to be done to figure out what the right way to do it is, but uh, we see more and more people really embracing this. Yeah, we've really come a long way from just the spreadsheets of data, just collecting it and not doing anything with it. And now being able to utilize the programs to actually use that data. Um, So I I actually want to go back a little bit uh, when you were talking about those data sets. How do you feel about the intellectual property of the people? So you said that these are all public. So tell me a little bit about the IP. Sure. So there's, there's really two parts. And actually, I'm glad you asked the question. So there's uh, within our data source, we have public data, which people sign up and use. And so it's known that it's public. Again, we always will keep um, anything that's confidential, any names or anything like that is always confidential. Um, so that's that's that. That's what I was mentioning before. The other data, IP, the companies own that. So that's their intellectual property. That's something that's really critical to always maintain that security and that separation. And so, you know, we can never see something that someone's doing, what they're working on, how they're doing it. Um, we can see the analytics behind it. How much time are they spending? But that's really where we draw the line. It's it's their intellectual property and it always should be um, for obvious Great. reasons. Great. Well, thank you so much for being with us and thank you for watching us. And until next time, stay curious.